Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. In today's episode, we will be resuming our examination of Egypt's late Eocene faunal communities, beginning with the largest animal found at Fayum so far, Geb Excelsus. Named after the Egyptian giant god of the earth, Geb was a massive titanosaur measuring up to an estimated 28 meters in length and weighing in at 50 tons. Known from a single 30% complete specimen consisting of a front left femur, ribs, neck vertebrae and associated hind limb elements, this animal was by far the largest dinosaur recovered from the late Eocene deposits of Fayum. Although similar in size to Cretaceous titanosaurs such as Argentinosaurus and Paralititan, Geb was a member of an Afro-Eurasian clade that survived the end Cretaceous extinction event. All titanosaurs recovered from Fayum were also members of this group, albeit of a much more modest size. Fully grown adults were high browsers with no natural predators, but younger individuals would have had to be wary of Teratotaurus and other large abelosaurs. Now we'll move towards some of Fayum's smaller vertebrates, the mammals. Late Eocene faunal communities at Fayum show a profound sense of endemism when compared to those of Laurasia. Almost all mammal groups present here are unique to the African continent, with derived multituberculates and metatherians representing relatively recent dispersals from Eurasia. Mammals that disappeared from the northern continent during the late Cretaceous or Paleocene were still present in force at Fayum. Eutriconodonts were diverse and successful, inhabiting a wide array of niches and lifestyles. These range from the small burrowing armadillo-like Afrostylus to the gliding predatory Volaticothea shedotherium. Dryolestoids were present as generalized insectivores and omnivores, somewhat less derived than their South American cousins, while the top mammalian predator was the badger-like and badger-sized symmetrodont Cassirolestes. In the northern hemisphere, large stagodontid metatherians fulfilled this role, but it seems that these pouch predators had failed to cross the Tethys Sea. However, one lineage of metatherians had managed to island hop from Europe. These were the appropriately named Afrodelphimorphs, close relatives of European peridectids. While modern members of this clade can be found across sub-Saharan Africa in huge numbers, they were noticeably rare during the late Eocene. Indeed, the genus Aegyptodelphus represents the sole member of this group from the Eocene at Fayum, making it the oldest known African metatherian. In a similar situation were the Fayum eutherians. What really stands out about these eutherians, however, is their phylogenetic placement. Unlike most eutherians from Laurasia, Zaharodon and Echinogale were unambiguous placental mammals. In addition to this, they represent the first appearance of Atlantogenatans in the Old World. Despite being only known from teeth and partial dentary bones, these animals were clearly basal members of the modern Sudafrotheria clade, judging from their extreme similarity to some living representatives of their respective families. The history of these African placentals and their South American relatives is highly complex, involving multiple dispersal events across the Atlantic, and will be elucidated in greater detail elsewhere. During the late Eocene, Egypt was covered in lush tropical forests and was bordered by the ancient Tethys Sea. Perhaps unsurprisingly, much of the avifauna of Fayum reflects this geographical condition. Almost all avian dinosaurs uncovered from Egypt were either pelagic seabirds or were semi-aquatic to some degree. The more scansorial and antiornithine birds were noticeably rare, while ornithurines were exceedingly common and diverse. Ichthyornithines swooped above the ancient coastlines and waterways like toothed seagulls, while the cormorant-sized pseudotooth bird, Ammonopteryx, seized small fish and cephalopods from the surface of the ocean. This would have been a risky enterprise, as these waters were patrolled by sharks and massive predatory mosasaurs. Birds living on the shoreline would have been spared these dangers, but still had to be wary of terrestrial dinosaurian carnivores. Thus, many of the ground foraging birds at Fayum display adaptations for fast running. At least three different families of paleonaths occupied these niches, living like the tinamous, roadrunners and galliforms of our own world. In addition, 
Given the marine and fluvial deposits that make up Fayum, it was not much of a surprise to paleontologists to discover an abundant assemblage of anseromorphs. While there were no familiar dabbling ducks and geese present at Fayum, these groups have little of a presence in Alter Earth. Close relatives of magpie geese from our world Australia were found here, alongside the gannet and loon-like diving vegaviforms. As in Europe, the heavy-set, goose-sized gastornithids fed on low-growing vegetation close to the water's edge. Living alongside these wildfowl were four genres of pterosaurs, sometimes feeding on the eggs and chicks of their distant Archosaurian kin. Two Asdarkoids, Bennu and Anka Draco, stalked the wetlands and beaches of Fayum, preying on mammals, lizards, frogs and small dinosaurs. Both of these animals were somewhat conservative in appearance, closely resembling the famous large Asdarkids from the late Cretaceous. Pteranodontids and Nyctosaurids soared over the open ocean, only returning to offshore islands to mate. All of these pterosaurs dwarfed their avian contemporaries and inhabited completely different ecological niches. Beneath the waves, mosasaurs were the dominant predators. Several genera have been discovered in Egypt's western deserts, including the enormous 21 meter long apex carnivore Hydrarchosaurus. This leviathan would have resembled the sea serpents present on ancient medieval maps a true terror for any animal unfortunate enough to cross its path. Remains attributed to this genus have been discovered across the Northern Hemisphere, from North America in the West to Pakistan in the East. One specimen from Fayum indicates that this monster was also a cannibal. The bones of a juvenile of the same species were found inside the abdominal cavity. A little further down the food chain were Orcosaurus, a 10 meter long generalist predator, and the 7 meter ichthyosaur like Lamnosaurus. The latter was a fast swimming, streamlined piscivore nestled at the base of the plotosauroid clade. These highly derived mosasaurs would later explode in diversity during the Oligocene, but during the Eocene they played second fiddle to their larger, more basal cousins. Living closer to the shorelines and estuaries of North Africa, with various other semi-aquatic reptiles, including Neosuchians and Tristadarans. The former were represented by the estuarine Dirosaurid, Dirosaurus ra, and the basal Eusuchian Sobki. Isolated teeth attributed to crocodiloids have also been found in contemporary Eocene sites in Algeria and Morocco, suggesting that they may have been present in Eocene Egypt as well. The Turistodarans present at Fayum were not the derived Gariol-like animals known from the Eocene deposits of Asia and North America. Instead, the two Fayum genera were actually descendants of very basal Turistodarans such as Lazarusuchus. As Lazarusuchus is known to have been present at the Middle Eocene Messel site in Germany, it is not too much of a leap to suggest that this small, unassuming creature crossed the Tethys at some point during the later Eocene. When this occurred is unknown. The two Fayum Turistodarans were early members of the clade Pontosuchoidea, and in appearance seemed to be throwbacks to Triassic marine reptiles. The smaller of the two, Kanthekai, was a short-necked, long-tailed generalist that lived on or near the ancient Tethys coastline while the more derived Cetisuchus resembled a slender, whip-tailed Nothosaurid. Cetisuchus also possessed reduced limb girdles and paddle-like limbs, suggesting that it could not walk about on land. Thank you for listening, everyone. Next week's video will involve a profile on the strange, earless monitor of Southeast Asia. I hope you stick around, and thank you for the recent subscriptions to my channel. Your help and assistance really means a lot to me, Thanks for listening and I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.